With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931 528 8050. It's time for the Marcus Satterfield Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It's our 10th show, the cast, nothing has changed. He's still Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. I'm still your host, Dylan Vazano. What has changed, Tennessee Tech is on the board. The Golden Eagles collecting their first victory of the season with a 30-26 win against Tennessee State Saturday in Cookville. Coach, I mean, tense at times, definitely exciting at times, but overall to get that first win, get the proverbial monkey off your back. Yeah, that was crucial, and uh, it was getting to a point in the season where you could feel it, you know, as much as we tried not to, you could feel it. So I think this takes a lot of pressure off our kids, and they can move on and hopefully finish strong the rest of the way out. Well, you know, this time we, we go through the highlights. I've got to imagine this should be pretty fun to see some of these plays. You ready to do it? I am. Okay, you heard the man. Let's roll the film. And it's time for the game highlights. That is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. <laughs> Tennessee Tech, Tennessee State, and Coach coming out with the purple jerseys. And right from the get-go, this is the very first play from scrimmage. Andre Sale with a little play action. He's going up top, and Dantez Bird is making the catch a big play, 44 yards. Yeah, it was huge, and the, the ball kind of got held up in the wind, and Dantez had the, it's like a change-up, and uh, he did a nice job standing there catching it. And then uh, Nick Madonia, who struggled from the right hash, has uh, got that monkey off his back, as you would say. Uh, you know, three for three from the right hash all day. So that was a big kick to get going. Yeah, able to make a 40-yarder. Obviously, a cold day, tough kicking condition. So the Golden Eagles up 3 nothing. Their defense, a three and out. Edie Thainrat, the first play of the drive. That goes for 12 yards. Now a handoff, Andrew Goldsmith. He's going to throw the football, and he's got Dantes Bird for a touchdown. Coach, the trickery. Yeah, big play, and we ran the play before just to get on that hash. We knew we were going to run that once we got in the strike zone, and uh, we'd worked it all week. As a big time throw by uh, by Andrew and great catch by by um, Dantes. So two drives already up ten nothing and Dame Adakunjo with the sack and I know the sacks want to get more of them. You guys pressured the quarterback all day. Yeah, that was crucial for Dame to get his first sack and uh, he had a great game the other day. Third down and 17, though, that's the very next play. And Patrick Smith, you're going to hear his name a lot. The preseason offensive player of the year did have a big contest. He collects that one for 38 yards later in the drive. There's that man again, Patrick Smith, 16 yards for a touchdown. And, Coach, now a 10-7 game. Yeah, he'll play on Sundays. He was hard to cover and did a great job on third and long. we got to get better. And then we come back on the second long play there, hitting a little shell across to Dantes to get us back down inside the red zone. 17-yard completion to Dantes Burke. The end of a long drive, 12 plays, 51 yards. And we said a, a tough day for kicking with the cold conditions, but Madonia made it look easy. From the right hash, that was crucial. Great job by Riley Patton and uh, Seth Huner getting the ball down. So the Golden Eagles up 13-7, to and a Derek Moore collects the sack. This week's OVC Defensive <laughs> Player of the Week. Coach, he had a monster game. Yeah, that was that was huge for our defense, and it's huge. I'm glad to see him to get, you know, a Derek get accolades because he's a great kid, and it's worked hard to, to earn that right. First drive of the second quarter for the Golden Eagles. We've seen him throw Andrew Goldsmith. We watch him run 31 yards. Golden Eagles coach Lee, 20 to 7. Yeah, and he, you know, we left a guy on block there, uh, you know, messed up our blocking pattern. He made the guy miss. That was a big run. Tennessee Tech midway through the second quarter. A fumble there by Andrew Knox, recovered by the Golden Eagles. Anthony Aker self force a coach, and you get a turnover. Yeah, and I think Dami got the fumble recovery there, so good job by Anthony and the, the whole defense. Very next drive, the pass for Andre Selwell did sail a little bit right there. It is intercepted by Dejor Nesbitt, so Tennessee State. They come right back now, trying to make it a game here in the first half. Michael Hughes, Patrick Smith yet again. This one for 30 yards. It's a one-possession game. Yeah, that was a great throw and catch. Kid took a shot right in the face when he threw it, and then that, again, that wide out is special. Very late first half. Third down and two from the Tennessee Tech six-yard line. Hughes the pass zips upstairs, so that is incomplete. And, Coach, you are able to hold them to a field goal attempt here by Lane Clark. Yep, that was big going in. If they'd have scored there, you know, that would have really messed with our psyche. But our kids, you know, they uh, they handled uh, the change of momentum, 
and we knew going into the game we wanted to attack and, and use our trickery and try to get on the board first, and we did that, so our guys were able to get in the locker room and get their composure and uh, make the adjustments needed for the second half. Yeah, Lane Clark kick made it a 20-17 to game. Obviously a great start in the first quarter. Tennessee State it makes it a three-point game, but like you said, team was leading going into the locker room, so kind of what's being said in the locker room during that time? Just, just you know, we're ahead. You know, and, and when you're 0-7 and you've trailed most of the year, the kids forget that they're ahead. Uh, you're up by three, so technically if they don't score, you win the game. So our guys uh, made the adjustment. The coaches did a great job and uh, came out and did our thing in the second half. Well, in the second half, we are ready to show you a whale of a final 30 minutes of action. It is time for the third quarter with Tennessee Tech leading 20-17. to 17. It's Tennessee State starts with the football first. Third down and six, Michael Hughes to Patrick Smith. Yet again, he had over 150 yards receiving. That one will go for 33 yards. Later on the drive down to the 16-yard line, third and three. Smith, 16 yards, he's in. So, Coach, now for the first time in the game, you guys are trailing. Yeah, they went down the field with relative ease there, so we had to do something, uh, you know, to get the momentum back. We fumbled the snap on third and one, then we punt to him, then our cover team goes down there, Marcus, does a great job right there of, of creating a turnover. And then Berserke, Clint Berserke, runs all the way down the field and, and splits the, the, you know, the, the, the pile in two and gets the fumble. And that was a huge play for Clint uh, and for our football team. And it's always good to see guys like Clint make a play because he works so hard during the season to do things for our team. Big play by the Golden Eagles. They get the football back. Can they capitalize? An emphatic yes, sir. Coach Tavin Kilpatrick, his first career touchdown. Yeah, that was actually 91 Tavin touchdown. So that was a lot of pressure. If he wouldn't have scored, we would have given him a hard time. But uh, we thought that might work, and uh, they, they executed it well. So how does Tennessee State respond? The pass, Stephen Newbold. I mean, we talked about Smith. He had a nice game as well. He's a great wide receiver. Seven catches, over 100 yards. Push back, though, and Lane Clark to try to tie this puppy up. But, Coach, it is no good, so the Golden Eagles still lead by three. Yeah, and you can see their body language there. You know, you see that. You, you get in your head a little bit, you think, and that was crucial, that holding penalty to, to push them back. So we go to the fourth quarter. Buckle your seatbelts. A thrilling final 15 minutes. The Golden Eagles leading 27 to 24. Just inside 10 minutes, the longest rush of the day. Andrew Goldsmith, watch him finish that run right there. Yeah, and it energizes the sideline. Great job by Dante's bird there. He doesn't only catch, but he – he makes key blocks. And then here's another one from the right hash that, you know, to make it a six-point game where they've got to score a touchdown instead of a field goal, that was a big-time kick by, by Nick. Now you see six and a half minutes left. Tech leads by six. Now just under five minutes. This is a fourth down play. The wheel route executed perfectly. I mean, that's just a good play by Tennessee State. <laughs> that's just uh, – that was very well executed by them. Third down and six. Later in the drive, we're inside three minutes to go. Watch Hughes run. He goes left. Uh, nothing's home. Let's see him go right, shifting direction, back to the left, and finally is able to dump it off seven yards to Sabri Curtis to convert the first down. So Tennessee State continues to move right here. Late in this game, a little over two minutes to go. The throw going for the lead, but the pass is intercepted right there by Clay Davis, coach. Yep, big time play. Clay read it out. They hit us on that early in the game, and uh, to get that pick was good. Uh, and it was tough, you know, his momentum was, he didn't, he couldn't really get down right there. And then we come back and try to punch it out and we, we mess a block of pattern up and get a safety and, and you're scratching your head like, are we cursed? Uh, but then I think the play of the game coming up, I don't know if it's on here, is, is Haydar Zidane's kickoff that he blasted inside the 10 yard line and we covered him inside the 25 and able to hold him and uh, close the game out. Yeah, that kick, so important, pushed Tennessee State back. The Tigers, though, with that completion, they start to get a little bit of momentum. The pass by Hughes is tipped, and there's Clay Davis again. That will seal the deal for a Golden Eagle victory. And the monkey is proverbially <laughs> off of our back. And we could take a deep breath. There was a minute 30 on the clock. They only had one timeout, so all we had to do was execute the victory formation, and we could go home happy, finally. So nice. We're showing it to you twice. Clay Davis, two interceptions in the final two drives. Here's the sweetest play in football. Andre Sell finally does take the knee, and the Golden Eagles, like you just said, Coach, they get the victory there against Tennessee State. Yep, and uh, my dad used to give me a hard time. It's like, son, that isn't a very good play. You lose yardage every time you snap it. But, <laughs> you know, retrospectively speaking, anytime we can do that and close the game out, that's really that's a good feeling. Absolutely. And, hey, let's take a look at the final stats from this ball game. Tennessee Tech obviously collecting the victory. And, Coach, the turnovers, you guys were able to force uh, four of them and had a good day defensively as well. We won the turnover margin. We won the fourth quarter 3-2, to two, which is kind of funny, but it's true. And we outrushed our opponent, held them to under three yards per rush, and we had 4.1 per rush. 
Uh, you do that, you got a chance to win every game that you're in. Yeah, and Andrew Goldsmith with, with a huge day, 101 rushing yards. He obviously threw the touchdown pass as well. Not listed in that graphic, but a Derek Moore, 12 tackles, two sacks, five tackles for loss, which is the second most in a game for any player in the nation this season. What a game he had. Uh, unbelievable game. And we didn't play great defensively. We didn't play great offensively. We didn't play great on special teams parts of the game. Our each group stepped up and made plays, and uh, it's complimentary football, and that usually equals you know the result that we got on Saturday, which is a win. Tennessee Tech played. Everyone else in the OVC played as well. It's the first time in four weeks that all nine Ohio Valley Conference schools were in action. You're ready for us to tell you about it. We're going to tell you about it, so let's do it. It is time now for the OVC scoreboard. That is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Well, you see a packed scoreboard here. Like you said, everybody was in action. A lot of good defensive battles. UT Martin won 27 to 10 over Eastern Illinois. The Skyhawks forced five turnovers in the contest as Martin snaps a three-game losing streak. Eastern Kentucky won its second straight after the Colonels had dropped three in a row. Another dominating performance on the ground. They had 229 yards rushing last week against UT Martin. They have 279 against Murray State in that game. Give them over 500 in the last two after 345 in the first six. So Eastern Kentucky moving the ball on the ground. Jacksonville State, a defensive performance as they go to 5-0 in the OVC. Held SEMO to just 22 rushing yards on 36 carries. And, of course, Tennessee Tech's opponent next week, Austin P. They had to go to Central Florida, a nationally ranked FBS team, and the Governors fall 73-33. to Coach, uh, obviously a packed slate. You got everybody in action. What's your take on the scores? That's a big win by Martin, you know, snapping the uh, three-game skid. And then finally, Eastern Kentucky. That's my team. I like those guys. They got a great backfield, a stable of running backs. They're, they're uh, obviously just handing the ball off now and pounding the rock. And then I think Jacksonville State's just bored. And uh, it takes till the fourth quarter till they feel a little sense of urgency. Then they finish the games off. Uh, and then Austin B, I mean, that's, it was a lot closer than that game shows right there. They, they put some points up. Well, that's going to do it right now for the first portion of our show. We have an offensively themed. Oh, wait, we got the OVC standings. These are back My in. Favorite They're your part. favorite part. I, know, I, I yeah. jumped the gun a little bit. I'll take it from here if that's Please okay. Please do. So you see we at least have a one now. So after <laughs> this coming week, hopefully we can we can climb up and get off the bottom and get a two. But Jacksonville State sitting there at the top, Austin P. Done a nice job winning the games they're supposed to win. They come into town this week. It's a big game for both schools. It's, we recruit against each other. It's a rival. And uh, we got to come come ready to go. And you can see the rest of them. We don't care about the rest of them. We care about <laughs> this week and us getting up a notch and not being at the bottom next week. Hey, Coach, are you sure you don't want to take it from here, send us to the break? I'm sure you got it. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. We, of course, have the player profile. We got the mic'd up. It's an offensive theme for both of those segments. We will have those segments and much more when we come back, though, on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. One hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Four drives inside. Put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place, anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. We are back on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It's time for the player profile segment. You might be wondering, okay, it's the 10th show. When are we going to hear from the starting quarterback? When are we going to see his player profile? Wonder no more. We've got Andre Sale. Let's roll the film. It is the player profile, and that is brought to you by the OBC Digital Network. My name is Andre Sale. I'm a redshirt freshman quarterback. I'm a business major. I'm hoping to um, continue my football play in the NFL and then go into coaching after that. Not sure where, but like I'm hoping to get a GA spot somewhere and then work my way up the coaching ladder. And I just know that the business uh, degree can help me with whatever I'm doing in my life. I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then Hurricane Katrina came, 
and uh, when I was in the second grade and moved me up, me and my family up to Little Rock, Arkansas. And so that's where I was really raised and um, I credit that city, like that's where I'm from and that's my, that's my home. Um, it, it, was a, it was a great city, uh, the capital of Arkansas and you know, I went to a Catholic high school there where um, I really grew as a man and as a football player and my, uh, my family has just been supporting the, the whole time, like they, they don't miss a game and every time I can look up in the stands and see them, like I know like um, it just it keeps me going, it, it keeps pushing me forward. Uh, the most influential person in my, in my life is my dad, um, just with how, how loving he is and how caring he is, you know, he's so selfless and he puts everyone else first, he puts our family first and just watching the way he treats my mom and my sister and me, you know, he's, he's built me into the man I am today and um, you know, I, I strive to be like him as a, as a, guy, as a man and as a father. Um, he's really set you know, a high bar for me to go after, but um, I love him to death, and uh, he's, he's definitely the most influential person in my life. Coach Coleman, our new quarterback coach, has made a big impact on me this year. Uh, he got here in the summer, and uh, I had no idea about him, but he, he's so bright, he's so smart. Um, he's really helped me with just learning the passing game and really simplifying everything for me. Like, so nothing's too hard for me. I, I feel like I could play a lot faster because he's he's here. You know, he takes the pressure off of me. He really slows things down and, and like talks into terms that I can really understand. And uh, it's been huge for me just having him on the sideline as well, like keeping me calm and you know making sure I, I don't take any plays off and and working with my fundamentals as well. Like uh, I I get lazy here and everywhere or every once in a while and I like I miss a throw. I might not follow through and he's always on me about it and I, I appreciate that and like. I wouldn't be the quarterback I am without him. Well, Coach, we finally get the opportunity to hear a little bit more. Andre Sell with his story and obviously coming from Baton Rouge and Hurricane Katrina, going up to Arkansas, but a freshman quarterback who's been the starter since camp ended and through the season. Yeah, he won the job, and, uh, you know, he, he's one of those guys that's a you – know, he, he runs the system, and, uh, you know, he does a nice job of coming in and calling our checks. Our run game is pretty uh, – extensive for a quarterback they don't look to the sideline they have to do it themselves so he's done a nice job operating that and he keeps getting better each week throwing the football so uh, you know he's, he's had a great a good season so far and he's going to get better as time goes on let's keep with the offensive theme it is now time to go with the offensive coordinator Tyree Foreman for this week's Mike Dutch, and that is brought to you by Pepsi oh man okay Okay. Ah. Uh, come on, Spence. Joker, 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 Joker. Joker. Get the balls back. We need some balls. We need some balls. Go. There you go. So go. So go. So go. Now, Dorton, you got to get your eyes inside, man. Come on. It's three-step read, right? You're chasing him, but you got to help outside. On one, two, three, he's still going. I got to get my eyes inside because that guy's going to come inside. Nice, nice, nice. Two is queen, two queen, two queen, two queen. Two queen. Oh, there it is. Nice. Santa, stop! A gap! Two, two, two ace, two ace! Two ace! Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it! Right middle, just right middle, not right edge. Left middle, left middle, left middle. Get down, get down, get down. Bunch right, bunch right. Remember on those triples, right? I'm taking my steps. I'm not looking at the linebacker to start. I'm taking my drop lateral, and I'm going, right? And I'm reading this guy. If he plays heavy into me, my hat goes front side. If he keeps widening, now my eyes are going to look for that linebacker because he's widening for a reason, right? I just expanded this, the B gap. So if the backer comes in the B gap, I got to snap off. He's going to take the guy. All right? The same look we just did. Don't bury your head in there. Come on. It's offensive coordinator Tyree Foreman. Uh, Coach, you look at that, you, you can really see his football knowledge and his smarts out there on the field. Yeah, he's a genius. You know, we, his nickname's The Brain. It's like we have a question, even, the, you know, the team, the kids, you know, they, they ask The Brain, like, what's a word? What's the definition? Like, he knows everything. Graduated from Virginia, coached a lot at West Point for Bobby Ross at Army. Uh, we were together at Temple for, you know, the whole time and then brought him down here. So, 
Uh, he and his wife both are, are, are great, great. Uh, Shakia and Cassie, their daughter, they're awesome. He's my best friend, so, uh, you know, I'm lucky to have him here. About to go to break, uh, one quick question. We've done every coach mic'd up wondering, do we ever mic you up? Has that ever happened? I don't know. They never asked me, so maybe we'll do that in a couple weeks. I like it. We might have to think about that. Right now, we're thinking about taking this thing to a break. we got much more to come, so stay with us right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Back again on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. There were so many Tennessee Tech athletic events, a lot of Golden Eagle success. Of course, the football win, but there is also so much more to talk about. He is now back after a couple week hiatus. Mark Wilson, Director of Athletics with this week's Golden Eagle Update. That is brought to you by TTUSports.com. The Golden Eagle soccer team, the number two seed in the Ohio Valley Conference Championships, did not play this weekend, getting a double bye into the Ohio Valley Conference semifinals. They will take on Eastern Kentucky in Murray, Kentucky, on Murray State's campus at 11 a.m. On, on Friday. Best of luck to them. They're looking to clinch the tournament championship and the automatic bid to the NCAA championships. Men's cross country finished sixth at the OVC championships. Gilbert Boyd finished sixth as an individual, and for his stellar regular season, he was named the Ohio Valley Conference Runner of the Year. Women's cross country's Purity Sanga was named Freshman of the Year, and she finished sixth at the Ohio Valley Conference championships. The Golden Eagle women's cross country team finished in eighth place. The Golden Eagle volleyball team lo lost both matches last week. They lost on the road to Jacksonville State at home to Southeast Missouri both by scores of 3-0. to zero. They're at home this weekend, Friday at 7 o'clock versus Moorhead State, Saturday at 5.30, the second game of the doubleheader with the Golden Eagle football team taking on Eastern Kentucky. Women's golf concluded their fall season, finishing sixth at the Terrier Intercollegiate. Allison Dunn earned a top 10 finish, tying for seventh. Men's golf finished second in the Sanford Intercollegiate. Senior Alexander Rindle had his first ever all-tournament honors, finishing tied for fourth. Eduardo Mania made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the ITA Ohio Valley Regional Championships. Another impressive performance by the men's tennis senior. He is in California this weekend at the ITA Championships. Of course, Golden Eagle basketball season tickets are on sale now. Last week was OVC Media Day in Evansville, Indiana, the home of the Ohio Valley Conference Basketball Championships. Both the men's and women's basketball teams were picked to finish fifth. So get your season tickets now. It's going to be an exciting winter over in the Hooper Evelyn Center. The women's basketball team, they'll begin their season this Sunday in an exhibition contest, Sunday, November 5th at 2 p.m., taking on Tusculum. Back down to you, Dylan. Thank you, Mark. We missed you. Glad to have you back. Made sure you got up there. We really appreciate that. Coach, a lot of exciting things. Obviously, soccer, postseason time for them is pretty big. Yep, wish them the best. And, uh, you know, they've had a very, very good year, and um, hopefully they keep going, man. We're going to keep going on the Marcus Satterfield Show. It is time to preview Tennessee Tech's homecoming matchup against the Govs of Austin P. It is now this week's opponent. That is brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Coach, Austin P, uh, one of the stories, of course, of the OVC this season, they had the, the lengthy 29-game losing streak. They broke that. They're currently sitting in second place with a 4-1 and one OVC mark. Yep, and uh, I don't know if everybody knows the story, but Coach Healy, the head coach there, is like my little brother. He, uh, I, I helped sign him at Richmond as a quarterback. I've known him since he was a high school at Boyd Buchanan. Uh, he was my receiver coach when I was offense square at Chattanooga for four years. He used to babysit my daughter. Like, my daughter was in his wedding. And so this will be like we have a natural, natural competitive rivalry, but we love each other and we do anything for each other. But I'm really proud of him, what he's done. I mean, he's totally changed that place just in, in, just in a year, a year and a half. So... Uh, you know, they've got it rolling. They've got a lot of confidence. And like I said, they've done a really nice job of winning the games they're supposed to win. And that's uh, something that we can learn from. And uh, we're looking forward to getting them here this weekend and competing against a really, you know, a confident and a, a, a very much improved Austin P team. Yeah, you look at the highlights from this game last year, but obviously his first season for Coach Healy and, and a tough year. Essentially, I'm sure you can kind of throw these out, and it's a brand new Austin P team this year. Brand new. A lot of the kids are still playing, but, uh, you know, they just look different. Mm -hmm. You know, they got new uniforms and, 
they just look different. They got a little bit different swag to them. So uh, we'll have our hands full. But our you know, luckily, like last year, you know, going to beat Tennessee State like we did, it gave us confidence, and hopefully. Uh, the way we beat Austin P last year, it gives us confidence to go do the same thing this weekend. And you look at this Austin P team, and had a lot of success running the football. Seems to be their bread and butter. They lead the OVC ninth in the country with over 2,100 rushing yards this season. And, and coach, they're ripping off 235 rushing yards a game. Yeah, they they got a nice little freshman quarterback from Brentwood Academy, Oates Fall, that played the state championship here, and he's doing a really nice job. And they want to run the jet sweeps and the misdirection and things of that nature. They got. An experienced offensive line, three seniors, two juniors, and uh, some good backs. So uh, they're, they're they're having a good season. Yeah, Oates Fall, two times he's won the Newcomer Player of the Week award in the OVC. He's had just two career starts, the win against Southeast Missouri, and then the loss to the FBS team in Central Florida. One thing we, we got to mention, of course, it is homecoming, and always a big deal. You guys had the thrilling one-point win against Southeast Missouri last year on homecoming. We'll take it again this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. A win. We'd take a win. We'll take whatever for homecoming. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time, and best of luck this Saturday against Austin Peay. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be back next week. How you can watch the game, it is on ESPN3 this week. Kickoff is at 1.30. Tucker Stadium, of course, is homecoming. There'll be a lot of pageantry, festivities beforehand. You can also listen to the game on 98.5 KISS FM and read all about it in the Cookville Herald Citizen after the game. For Coach Satterfield, I'm Dylan Bazzano saying farewell here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. <laughs>